Now to a Target 12 investigators exclusive toxic delay. Three miles of the Winasquatucket River cutting through multiple communities in northern Rhode Island remained so polluted residents are told to stay away even years after a major settlement was reached to clean it up. Target 12 investigator Tim White has been looking into why the efforts to restore the river have stalled. He's here now with the exclusive details. Tim. For generations, the Winasquatucket River has been closed to swimming, fishing, and other activities. Now, six years after a deal was reached to clean it up, there still has been little progress. This is contaminated sediment at the bottom of here. Mayor Joseph Policina Jr. was born and raised in Johnston, and for his entire life, he was warned about the Winasquatucket River. What were you told about the water here? Don't go anywhere near it. The river contaminated with the highly toxic and cancer-causing chemical dioxin, which constantly leaches into the water from the soil. The source of this was from factories that used the river for power along in the mid to early 20th century. And because of the pollutants that came from those factories, those toxins came in the river and they were absorbed by the sediment. Unfortunately, we're dealing with a legacy of past activities out there. Terry Gray is the director of the Rhode Island Department of Environmental Management. It's on something called the National Priorities List, which means this is one of the biggest contaminated sites or most serious contaminated sites in the country. The water is so unsafe, the Environmental Protection Agency produced this video with a warning to residents. Don't wade or swim into the river. Don't dig into the riverbank. In 2018, state and federal officials announced a major fix, a $100 million settlement with the property's owner to clean up the three miles of the Winasquatucket River. How's the cleanup going? Uh, there's been a stall in the cleanup. The plan called for the removal of 300,000 tons of contaminated soil and shipped to the landfill in Johnston. But years later, the toxic soil remains. Policina says there has been talk of other cheaper solutions that would not involve physically removing the soil. Would you raise your family there? No. No, I would not. I would look for it elsewhere. So again, I would understand the apprehension unless I had someone come and explain the science to me of why this is safe. Gray says the state would oppose any plan that does not involve removing the soil, which Policina worries could mean a protracted legal battle and more delays. But Gray expressed optimism that the landfill run by the quasi-government agency Rhode Island Resource Recovery is closer to agreeing to taking the sediment. I do think they're moving in a direction where, where they've they found avenues that where they can manage it, but, but it's their decision at that point. It's a business decision by resource recovery as to whether or not they do this or not. The executive director of resource recovery tells Target 12 they expect to have a decision within 90 days, adding a major consideration is whether or not the associated work can be completed in a manner that ensures the health and safety of those involved in the receipt, storage, and potential use landfilling of the soils. In the meantime, Policina says he feels the residents of Johnston and North Providence are stuck in the middle, waiting now for decades for the Winasquatucket to be clean. Oh, it would be huge. It would be huge for the environment. It would be huge for quality of life. I think most importantly, we want this river clean so it can be used again. Coming up new at six, storms fueled by climate change are causing the Winasquatucket to spill over, creating even more concerns about the toxic water spreading into surrounding neighborhoods. With the Target 12 investigators, Tim White, 12 News. Now to a Target 12 investigators exclusive toxic delay. A river that cuts through Johnston in North Providence has remained polluted for decades, despite a major settlement years ago to clean it up. New at six, why state and local officials are concerned climate change will make things worse. Target 12 investigator Tim White is here now with what he's learned. The Winasquatucket River is so polluted, the EPA forbids people from swimming or fishing there. And now with more severe storms and flooding, there are worries that the toxic water will spread. Johnston resident Michael Corba lives within walking distance of the Winasquatucket River and visits often. Twice a day, usually after breakfast and after lunch. One day in January, this park along the river looked very different. There was an overnight flood that had taken out this river, had raised the level of the water almost to 
maybe six feet below where we are standing right now, flooded this entire park that we use daily. These kinds of extreme flooding events are even more of a concern for the Winasquatucket, a river that has been polluted for decades. And when this river crests, it's not good for anybody because those contaminated sediments become loose and they come up on the uh, banks of the river. Mayor Joseph Palacina Jr. grew up in Johnston and knew as a kid to avoid the river. But despite a 2018 settlement with the owner of the original factory that polluted these waters, the dirty soil that constantly leaches toxins into the water remains. Palacina says multiple government agencies are involved in the efforts. Do you feel like your town's stuck in the middle of the, of the bureaucracy that you're talking about? Uh, I do, but I would like everyone just to sit down at the table and get this done because it is best for residents to get this contaminated sediment out of the river. The plan to clean the river is a complicated one and involves removing 300,000 tons of toxic soil and potentially send it to the landfill in Johnston. The quasi-government agency that runs the landfill has yet to decide if they will accept the dirt. A decision is expected in 90 days. I think it's frustrating. Again, we need to show the people that we can all come together as government agencies. Meanwhile, Palacino says there has been talk of an alternative solution, capping the toxic soil at the riverbed to mitigate the dioxin from leaching into the water. No, that's not something that we're in favor of at all. Rhode Island Department of Environmental Management Director Terry Gray says because of climate change, the state would strongly oppose any plan that does not call for the removal of the toxic soil. Flooding is a real potential, more aggressive flows, are a potential. I think it would be really hard to maintain the, the safety and integrity of a disposal unit that's anywhere within the, the floodplain of the river. They need to get working on it. For Corba, he wants to see a greater sense of urgency before a new set of officials inherit the problem. And that's the thing we're really missing. People will hand it off to somebody else and not get it done. A spokesperson for the EPA tells Target 12 they are working with all parties to assist in reaching an agreement. Policina tells me he's concerned if the landfill decides not to take the soil, this could all end up in the courts, leading to further delays. With the Target 12 investigators, Tim White, 12 News.